Hello everyone, Sonley here and welcome back to another Bedrock Edition tutorial video. As you might know, I have designed many, many, many things for the Bedrock Edition over the years, and during that time, I have picked up quite a few tips and tricks regarding commands. There are an absolute load of commands in Minecraft, and they are so, so very helpful and useful and can save you a lot of time if you know how to use them properly. In today's tutorial video, we'll be going over 10 very simple commands that I use basically every single day in Minecraft. When you know how to use these commands, you'll be able to save a lot of time when designing, testing, or building different redstone contraptions or farms, or just have more fun in general while playing Minecraft. Just as a little bit of a disclaimer, I am not a command block professional and I don't really know the majority of the commands in the game since I've never had to use them or get to know them directly. So if you have questions or want to dive deeper into commands in general, then check out the Wikipedia articles that I have linked down in the description of the video. First of all, we're going to check out five more simple commands at the beginning of this video. They might be simple, but they have a ton of use cases and will save you absolutely hours in your worlds. And then at the end of the video, we'll also check out five more complicated commands that are equally as useful. Our first command is the very simple but extremely powerful fill command, simply slash fill. And this command will allow you to place, break, or replace blocks in your Minecraft world. So for example, if we want to build a giant roof of stone in our world, we can run a very simple fill command. All of these numbers in here are simply the coordinates that we want the roof at. We enter that command and well, bam, we just placed 7,416 blocks with no effort at all. If you're building something on a large scale, fill commands are your friend. You will want to get to know fill commands. I probably use fill commands more than anything else in the world because they are just simply so useful. And of course, you can also run a fill replace command to target a specific block of your choice. So for instance, if we want to replace all of the stone of a different block, we don't need to remove the other blocks that we have in the area, we can simply run a replace command. So let's replace all of that stone with diamond blocks. It's going to be like diamond block zero, replace stone, for example. And as you can see, we now have all of that stuff filled in. Now, one of the most annoying thing about fill commands is the fact that you need to put in the coordinates for the two corners that you need to fill in. So for example, if you want to fill in this platform again, you got to get the coordinates of this corner, fly all the way over to that corner, and then get these coordinates as well, which is not very fun at all. However, you can actually bypass that by running commands using a tildes. So let's go ahead and use a fill command. We're going to go ahead and put the little squiggly tilde line and then just fill those in. This is going to execute the command right where you're standing. So the little tildes are basically where you are in the world. So if we do this, it's going to make a 10 by 10 by 10 cube centered on us and of course we're going to make that out of tnt because we're special like that <laughs> so now if we move over here and run the same exact command you can see it's going to fill in that cube of tnt over there we can go anywhere in the world and the command will work just fine there's also the fill destroy command which will you know basically destroy the block and drop it as an item as you can see there it destroyed all that tnt and dropped it as an item these are just glitched blocks you can ignore those and for the final trick there is also also the hollow command which will make a giant cube however it'll be completely hollow as you can see and it is actually surprisingly useful in a variety of different situations and next up we have the clone command basically the clone command allows you to copy paste different things in your world to different areas so if we run this clone command right here that's going to give us a brand new advanced trident killer sitting right here behind us which is pretty beautiful this is extremely useful and very convenient testing all kinds of different redstone contraptions you can clone your device to a bunch of different areas and then you can test like 10 of them at one time and it is it's just so very convenient especially for trident killers because these things need a lot of very intense testing to make sure that they work for a long time so as you can see we can just copy paste these things now what you need to do for a clone command is you need to get the coordinates of the two opposing corners so for this this one you grab the coordinates of this corner right here and then the coordinates of like this corner right here that way your entire build is pasted into the command 
Now, also, when you're running the clone command, I would suggest running it like far away from where you want to actually build. That way you know how it's going to be orientated. You might expect it to paste off in like this direction and it turns out that the thing paste is behind you. That could destroy some of your work. You want to be careful that you don't accidentally like paste over something in the world that you actually need. Keep in mind, clone commands are not perfect. For instance, some types of redstone components will break after being cloned, like redstone torches, and also clone commands do not copy over entities, so things like animals, villagers, mobs, tridents, armor stands, minecarts, none of those things will get copied with a clone command. However, it is still very, very useful and can save you a lot of time. I think we can all agree having a potion effect is a very desirable thing, especially in creative mode where you can have just like infinite access to potions. So your first instinct might be to grab a night vision potion or maybe a strength potion or something to do whatever you want. However, we have the power of the effect command. This will give you any effect in the game. If you run it as at S, that is going to affect yourself. So you can give yourself like night vision up to like a hundred thousand seconds. You can put up to six digits in here. That's actually nearly a million. <laughs> and then you can also give it an amplifier up to 255. Now keep in mind these amplifiers are kind of broken. Most of the time you won't need anything higher than 20 because it kind of just breaks the game any higher. And then also, you know, that's that's fine, but you get these like little fart bubbles. These things are the most annoying things in the world. So what you'll want to do is put a true after that, and that'll remove all of those bubbles, and it is ever so convenient. Our next command is the kill command, and you have to be very sure that you know what you're doing when using a kill command. Kill commands are very powerful and they are irreversible, so make sure that you know what you're doing before you ever touch these, especially if you're playing on a multiplayer world. Basically, kill commands kill any type of entity that you target. So if we type in slash kill, you can see that we get a few different options. At A will kill every single player in the world. Probably not a good thing unless you're an evil person, but there is one command that is worse than that, and that is at E. You may have seen the memes about this online because it is basically the worst command to run. This will kill every single entity in the entire world. Never run a kill at E on its own. However, we can add some different arguments to this and that'll give us a lot of different control over what we kill. So if we type in it, kill at E bracket type, then we can put in the actual entity that we want to kill specifically. So if we have a problem with bees, we can target bees like so, and that'll kill every single bee in the entire Minecraft world, which may or may not be desirable. Another thing that you can do is also put a radius on your kill command. So put a comma, r equals and then the block radius that you want to kill things in so if we put an r equals 10 that's going to be a radius of 10 blocks around the person that is executing this command if we run that that's only going to kill those bees because they were the only ones within 10 blocks of the player another thing that you can do with kill commands is target the opposite of something so for example if we go ahead and put an exclamation point in front of our bee that is going to kill everything that is not a bee in your minecraft world this could be useful for various different situations where you want to kill everything that isn't a player for example and of course you can also put a radius on this too so if we put a radius of 10 that is going to kill everything not a bee within 10 blocks of us of course there's nothing within the area but if we spawn in some cows and then run the same command you'll see that it kills all of those cows but it doesn't touch the bees. And next up, we have the summon command. This allows you to summon any kind of entity in the game at any location that you like. And of course, this is pretty simple. We already have spawn eggs in the game that essentially do the same exact thing. However, the summon command gets a lot more interesting once you realize that we can use mob events. And down in the description of the video is gonna be a massive paste bin from Triaster with all of the different vanilla mob events that you can use for summon commands. So basically a mob event is just the different things that the mobs will typically be doing. So we can, for instance, summon in a Ravenger with this spawn event right here, and that will summon in with an Evoker on top of it as a part of a raid, which is really awesome for testing all kinds of different things. There's also ones for Creepers, for, you know, becoming a charged Creeper so that you don't need to mess with lightning or anything like that. Very convenient. And you can summon in a Pillager Captain, which is also pretty 
awesome for raid farm testing. As you can see, this guy will actually give you the bad omen effect. So you can do that for pretty much any kind of mob in the game. If it has a thing that it does, there's going to be a mob event for it and you can summon it in doing that action or being in that state. So those are all the very simple commands that will give you a massive leg up in your creative worlds when it comes to designing, building, testing, and just having fun in general. Now we're going to get into some slightly more complicated commands and these are just going to be execute commands. Execute commands basically allow you to run a command off of something else. So if we open up this command block right here, you can see that we're executing at guardians wherever they may be and then we're filling wherever they are with a wool block and then we have that going off into another command block and this is just going to kill the guardians after we fill them. So what we can do is we can flick this lever right here and then any guardian that spawns in the world will be replaced with an orange wool block and then immediately killed. So basically this is going to tell us exactly where the guardians are spawning and this is extremely useful for finding out where structure spawns and spawn spots are. Of course you don't need to use it for just guardians, you can use it for anything you like and that'll tell you exactly where mobs are spawning. So if we grab a guardian spawn egg and summon one in, as you can see it's going to get replaced with wool immediately and then basically killed. So it's actually quite useful and quite fun. So execute commands can be used with any command in the game as far as I'm aware. This next one is very convenient for drawing lines wherever you're looking. So this is a execute command basing it off of me wherever I'm at and it's using a set block command with these little arrows to tell it to place a block 24 blocks in front of me and that block is going to be a stained glass which will be orange. So if we walk onto this pressure plate you can see that we can start drawing a circle around where we're standing using these orange glass blocks. And we can actually make the circle go all the way around me, which is very convenient. Of course, I'm kind of going quick, so it's not going to be a perfect circle. A little bit of inconsistencies, but yeah, as you can see, we now have that full circle going around where we were standing. And if we draw another circle with 54 blocks of radius, then that would actually be like the spawning range of your world. So rather convenient for drawing out circles and just for filling in spheres and doing all that good stuff. So within just a couple of minutes of using this drawing command, I was able to set up a very rough circle going all the way around our spot. So that spot right there would be the AFK spot for like a mob farm. Inside of that orange sphere, you know nothing is going to spawn. And inside of this red sphere, you know that this is where mobs will spawn in your world. So this gives you a ground work for where you can start building a mob farm. Very convenient. This is just one of many, many different uses that you could use this drawing command for, of course. But yeah, I find it very fascinating and I'm interested to see what you guys come up with using this drawing command. This next one maybe isn't super useful in a lot of situations. However, it is a really fun one when testing mob farms. So for example, if you have a lot of guardians or a lot of mobs in a mob farm and they're causing you a lot of lag and you're just curious in general how many mobs are there, you can use an execute give command to count them. So we're executing at the guardians, wherever they are, and then we're giving ourselves one fish. Now this is going to execute at every single guardian that there is and give you one fish or one of whichever item per guardian. So if we press that button, you can see that we got ourselves a whole lot of fish. <laughs> we got many, many salty fishes here. And as you can see, that is a pretty quick and easy way of counting mobs whenever you want. Execute set block commands can also help you find your caves as well. So with this simple system right here, we're finding all the creepers in the world and we're set blocking a piece of wool 90 blocks up in the air. As you can see, we have several of these popping up around the world. And then we're also killing the mobs after that as well to allow more to spawn. So this is going to basically find all the creepers that are down in your caves and show you exactly where your caves are. So if you dig down from here, we will guarantee to find some form of area where a creeper can spawn, most likely a cave or a mine shaft or something like that. And this can be incredibly useful for helping you find caves in your Minecraft world. Obviously, if you want to find your caves in survival, you'll need to make a copy of your world and then do this method. That way you don't ruin your achievements or have just like a ton of floating blocks 
all around your world. So you can actually go the complete opposite direction of this as well and have your caves be automatically lit up for you so that you don't need to go around and do any cave lighting at all. So what this command right here will do is it'll find every entity in the world that is not a player or wherever they are and it's going to place a scene lantern right underneath them. So basically a mob will spawn underneath the ground in your caves in a dark area. It'll get a scene lantern placed right underneath it and then be immediately killed allowing more hostile mobs to spawn. So if we go down this hole right here into our mine shaft, we can actually see that several different mobs have spawned down here and they have been replaced with scene lanterns. So we're automatically lighting up all the caves throughout this world and it's really cool. Of course, this is also going to affect the passive mobs in your world as well as you can see around us and it's also going to affect items too. So it could use a little bit of tweaking if you don't want to have all of this happen, but mostly this is gonna be very helpful for testing things like witch farms or passive passive mob farms or really any kind of different farm that you're trying to build in a creative world where you don't really mind the mess. And you can probably guess what the final one is going to be. One of my favorite commands, an execute fill command. So this one right here is going to be executing at me and filling a pretty large area just with air. This is going to allow us to clear out a massive amount of blocks very easily simply by walking around the world. And this is actually how I've expanded this red stone testing world to be a lot nicer to build in so of course you can set this up with a bunch of different things to allow you to automatically fill in a grass layer at this height and then I also run a command to fill in stone at like six or seven layers down. So we can turn on these commands individually. We have one for removing all the upper blocks, which you just saw. This one right here is the grass cover, basically the same. And then we also have the stone foundation. So let's turn on the stone foundation. You'll see that the stone down below just got filled in. If we try and you know remove these blocks, they're gonna get automatically filled in. And then we can turn on the grass cover. As you can see, all of that's happening as well. So this basically just turns your world into a super easy, super flat. Using these three commands in tandem means that we can simply fly around the entire world, wipe out all the different hills in the area, fill everything in with stone and grass, and make it overall a much nicer, smoother building experience. And uh, really just, it's, it's so satisfying. <laughs> it's basically world paint, but with no effort, and it's amazing. So of course you can use this for a variety of different situations, not just turning your world into a super flat. There is infinite possibilities with these fill commands. So have some fun with it. There is so many things that you can do. Thank you very much to TK for requesting this video and for making it a possibility as well. Your support is greatly appreciated and you help make so many things on the channel a possibility. TK is a patron of ours over on Patreon, and without our patrons, this channel basically would not exist, along with many other things that you might take for granted around the channel. Our patrons make all of it possible, so thank you yet again, TK, for helping support the channel, the videos, and absolutely everything. <laughs> if you would like to help support the channel and get a bunch of different perks as well, then consider checking out Patreon at the links below. So those are 10 very simple but very, very useful commands that I use basically every single day when designing, building, and just playing in creative mode. I hope that they are just as useful to you as well, and of course if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this video or the commands, then let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you did enjoy today's video, then consider leaving a like as it helps out the video and the channel significantly, and if you're new here, then make sure to subscribe. We are incredibly close to 200,000, and it is so very exciting. Anyway, I'll see you all down in the comment section, and in the next one, thank you for watching, and then there was silence.